Yet a che calling coolie in a shea, can you on in a shla, look at the nebba shishin? Put he gleany, dash a che, glizzafana dashanella. Shan't toha dent, I use a nasha. Could our a dene astonish. When I first started as a guide, as far as I know, I was one of the only female Navajo River guides back in 2010. I think it's important as a Diné River guide to tell our story and our perspective and how we connect to this place. We have that innate connection to our environment. We connect to everything around us, the land, the, uh, the water, the animals. We see them as our relatives. We see them as living beings, that they're sacred, that they can teach us a lot of things. One of the sayings or one of the things we say about water is Tua e i na at e. Water is life. Some of the challenges we face with water on Navajo Nation is that we really don't have easy access to it due to climate change or over extraction of water. Um, from some of the energy companies that have come through to mine coal, mine uranium. Once you know your water is threatened, it's very challenging to continue living in that area, but we wouldn't really have another place to go to. The land and the homes have been passed down in those communities through the families. It's not like you can just pick a location and that's where you, you want to live, then you can move there. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way for us. Being back on the the Navajo Nation, it's home, and where I was raised. I grew up in Shanto, and that will always be home for me, and where I return to, and where my parents are. Some people can describe it as kind of a harsh desert environment, but to me, it's a beautiful landscape and that's where I want to live in the future. When we went off the reservation to go to school on Flagstaff, we were kind of living in two different worlds. I think for me, I might have probably lost some of the language and culture while being here in Flagstaff and away from my family. But as I grew older, I want to reconnect and relearn some of those uh, traditions. My family, like many others on the Navajo Nation, did not have electricity or running water, which means that we had to travel 10 miles plus to haul water. 
I think that really taught my siblings and I to appreciate the value of water. His mom has blue eyes and looks like he got one blue eye. don't know where their water comes from. We know where our water comes from. We have to haul it. We have to take it from point A to point B, and then we use it, and we use very little of it. If you want to manage water better is to understand where it comes from, where it goes, what it's used for, and know the importance of it as well. The river is it's a powerful being. Being on the river, uh, right when I push off my first like stroke, I kind of let everything go. I notice when I'm out, I rarely see our own people out there. It's not just our people, it's the Opi, the Ute tribes, the Zuni. There's a lot of different tribes that went through that area and lived in that area as well. But I think in general, for Native people to have access to some of these places can be challenging. I'm not seeing the people that look like you that can be a role model for you. to share and be that role model for, for other guides, especially our, our own people. I grew up with Brandy and Shanto, and we are related by clan. She's like family to me. I know she's interested in learning more about being a guide on the river. Hopefully I can be that example and share what I know. goes on the river to know that it's indigenous land, that there's a history there that might be overseen or not told. Before Park Service, before BLM, before Forest Service, before any of the boundaries, including the Navajo Nation, all of it was indigenous land. It's not just a playground. It's healing for me, and I hope that other people can feel that as well.